Hey, I'm going to pray. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Just so you know, all who are watching, I have um, three of my friends and brothers in Christ with me. I have Reverend Fields here uh, in the red shirt. Rev. Reverend, thank you for being with us. I have Pastor Brandon here as well, our youth pastor at Calvary. And I have Cornelius, our care director, who's also getting ready to be a pastor, which we're excited about that, man. You're working hard. Yes, working hard to get that, the credentialing. So praise God for that. Let me pray. And then we're going to start our conversation today uh, to talk about um, how we can uh, respond right now to our world with racism and also how to have, how to see racial reconciliation happen in our community. So let me pray. God, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, we want to honor you with our words. We ask for you to lead us, Lord, and, and thank you for your word and your direction, God, for for us right now. Your word is faithful to direct us through all seasons. And Lord, what we're going through in our nation right now, um, you, you have answers. <laughs> and we thank you for that, God. And so, Lord, we come together in unity to discuss this great need, Lord, to see racism die in the hearts of man and to see reconciliation and unity in our land. We love you, God. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, we're going to have, you know, open conversation here about how you guys feel with what has been going on in our world. And it's really kind of culminated with three events that's taken place in the past two weeks. Um, you have the situation with Malin Arbery, who he... It's all good. Go ahead. You can answer it. <laughs> you have the... Ahmad Arbery, who was uh, shot and killed in the street. You have, um, I still don't remember the lady's name that was in the park, who was filming the black gentleman who was just out for bird watching. And right. you know, we caught a glimpse of, of really uh, racial profiling there. And, and, then, and then the sad, sad, um, terrible video we saw of George Floyd and what happened to him. Um, and uh, so how do you guys feel right now about everything that has transpired in our nation in the past week? What kind of emotions or feelings have you had? Um, just, and you can share from your heart. Sure. One of the things that uh, has uh, been important to me, uh, one, one, one person you missed off uh, is Brianna Taylor. She was in her home and, uh, you know, police came in and shot about six times she died. Uh, in order to go forward, I think it's important to understand our history. And part of the history, everybody has a history, history being a compound word, his story. So everyone tells the story from their perspective. The perspective that I look at and as believers, we should look at is what is God's story? And God's story is always based in scripture, his love letter from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in times past, and still hold on to it now, in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, the Bible declares that the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the whole earth, seeking those whose heart is loyal committed to him, that he can show himself strong. So part of the challenge as history, as a black man, again, looking through the lens of the scripture, understand the history. Pastor Ryan mentioned about, you know, three names uh, recently, past two or three weeks, that has the nation in the world's attention. Uh, growing up in the, in the inner city, I've come across a lot of um, unfortunate incidents with uh, police officers. So I think the cry now is, especially for black people, the cry is to receive uh, equality, not just uh, with social justice, education, healthcare, uh, and on down the line. So. The protest, I think, is healthy. Of course, uh, you've got all segments of people 
that's trying to distract from the protest, but prayerfully, the protest will um, open up eyes of the local law, uh, the state law, and the federal law. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's that's really what we need to see, isn't it? Is mm -hmm. is changes where we can change yeah. in the laws for sure. So that's good. Yeah, hey, Ron, I I think it's uh, a lot of it has to do with people wanting to uh, know that they've been listened to. And that has a lot to do with uh, just being validated. Mm -hmm. when someone knows that people have heard what, what's on their heart or, or, or some of their experiences, then, then they're able to uh, feel like they have value. Then they're able to feel like then they're, they're a part of something. Mm -hmm. But if, if everything that uh, they do or, or something happens to them, they feel marginalized and, and they feel, um, they feel left out, to be honest with you. So I, I think this, um, this protest is really a, a megaphone. And we had a chance to witness the, the protest yesterday. And, and it was really neat to see just talking to some people, sharing some of their experiences, some black, some white. And, and they all had um, different uh, experiences. And I was talking to a gentleman. I said, you know, there's a lot of injustices out there but this is coming through the megaphone of the black community right now. Yep. And, and so we need to listen and see exactly uh, what's being said. Exactly. I, that's how I feel as well. Brandon, what about you, man? What have you been feeling? Um, I've been feeling like it's great to see people empathizing and trying their best to understand uh, what it's what it's like growing up black in America um, never before have you seen people of different races you know a lot of pastors a common thing I'm hearing online and from everybody is you know they'll never fully understand but they're trying to understand um, knowing that's something they'll never actually go through, but trying to understand. And the more that you, somebody does understand, the more change that can happen. And uh, so it's great to see that. And ultimately the whole reason I wanted to have a conversation with you to join in on Sunday's message and everything is just to help believers specifically believers see this situ see this situation in our culture right now and instead of us looking at it through our own eyes and letting our emotions maybe go too far but to just see the situations through scripture and then there is still emotion that goes along with that i'm not trying to say scripture calls us to not be moved to emotion but make sure it's proper and the way we act and respond to it is proper. So yeah, that's my initial reaction. It's just good to see all races kind of uniting and pointing, oh, bringing awareness to the problem. Yeah, and I, I've noticed the exact same thing. And I think there's some um, discomfort going on as well, guys. Things I'm seeing online, people are not sure what to say or how to say it. Some people are saying things that do not, that you probably shouldn't say, you know, and maybe it's just because they're not used to it. Um, there's just, un, there's just, just this discomfort of, um, I've, I know I need to say something. I know I need to do something. I just haven't ever had to. So it's the first time I've ever done it. You know, it's the first time they spoke out against this injustice. And so it's great that that's finally happening. You know, it's, that's, that's actually a good thing. Um, and what's interesting, I was watching Dr. Vadi Bachman sermon called Ethnic uh, Gnosticism. He made that term up and um, he's a black pastor, just solid in the word of God. And um, he made the comment that our nation is, is reaping what we sowed many years ago. And I think, wow, that was spot on. Like we're dealing with, 
damage that was done to the black community, you know, years ago, and it's still coming out, right? And it still hasn't been dealt with. What, any thoughts on that before I move on to the next question? But any thoughts on what I just said or what you guys were saying? Yeah, I mean, I think it's true. We are reaping what we sowed and people can say, well, laws have changed and the government has moved towards equality and, and uh, you know, equal opportunity and all those things and segregation and racism in almost every aspect isn't legal anymore. But the reason why we're still dealing with the issues is one, you can look into the biases people have. Two, you could look into the economic system um, and the cycle that perpetuates. But ultimately, it's because laws can't change people's hearts and laws can't change the way people think. Um, if you've had, if you've grown up in some area where it's mostly racist and racism in people's heads, and that's what they teach their children, you know, then it's going to carry on no matter what the law says. Yeah, yeah it's good. Well, yeah, to, to piggyback on what uh, Brandon was saying with the laws, uh, I think it's helpful to think about do laws lead values or do values lead laws? And part of the challenge is our values ought to dictate the law. And uh, Jesus made this statement in John 10.10. 10. He said, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he came that we might have life and life abundantly. And so part of the challenge is to right was wrong. Jesus, when he came, he said, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so he brought in heaven's government and heaven's way of living. And so because there's uh, the church, which is not white, black, red, yellow, or brown, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. And so to have the mindset of the church to be uh, uh, a change agent, if you will. Believers are not supposed to infiltrate into society, but to change society. Mm. And so part of what happens is if there's injustice anywhere, uh, the heart of the believer ought to be to change that. And so part of what we see, whether it's with women not having the right to vote or black spilling discriminated against through racism. It's a time for the church to rise up and say, Lord, show me through your wisdom and through the love of God, how to bring about understanding in the church and in our, in our nation and around the world. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask a controversial question. It's not even on my, on my list. What do you say to people who are right away respond with more of the all lives matter? You know, um, what can we, how can we help them, you know, understand that we, we get that. We know all lives matter, but what can we encourage them with right now? And we're all brothers in Christ here. So we're going to come at this with a biblical perspective. Like we know that Jesus died for all. That's, that is like a no brainer. You know, so how can we help everyone understand that that's not necessarily what needs to be said right now? Sure. I, I think um, the main thing is when somebody's hurting, you don't bring up another situation to try to um, compare it with, because when you do that, you really just, uh, you take away the impact or you take away what's going on with their with their life, their experiences. So this all life matters, yes. But in this particular case, you have a group, you have the black community that's hurting. And to say that, you know, that all life matters at the, at this particular point 
is really saying that our cause really is is not what, what we're protesting right now it really doesn't carry any weight at all mm-hmm. so that's really the thing is it's, it's not empathizing with the community right now or what they're going through right now so that's that's the biggest issue is yes is it true right i, I think in ecclesiastes 3 it says there's a time for everything there is a time you know to to put that platform forward our lives do matter but right now we have a uh, our community is hurting so we need to, to comfort them mm-hmm. that's good yeah, it's kind of like, you know, I thought about it. Oh, go ahead, Reverend, please. No, no, I was there. You, go ahead. go ahead. Well, I was just thinking about my daughter. You know, if my daughter was hurting, I wouldn't ignore her because my son is nearby. And he, you know, do I not give my daughter attention with hurting just because my son's watching? Should I, do I need to split myself up and go, you know, he's not hurting at the moment, you know, as much. So just just that simple analogy, you know, and I, Cornelius, I agree 100%. Like, if someone came to me and said, my father's dying of cancer, I'm not going to be like, well, my mother is, you know, dying. Of, you know, you don't do that. You know, you listen and you show care and mercy. So that's that was just what was on my heart just now. Certainly. Uh, also, uh, one of the things I think the misconceptions about Black Lives Matter is is what's not being said is only black lives matter. Right. I think people take it that, that it's only black. It's not only black. My wife had a post the other day and she said, if you have a neighborhood and a bunch of houses, but well, one house is on fire, the community should come together around that one house that was on fire. And so at the particular point, uh, I think George Floyd was the tip, in, tip of the iceberg that takes us to look at the history of what black people specifically have had to endure over the past couple of years, actually going back 400 years to when uh, slavery came to the nation. So it's an excellent time, I believe, when all communities are coming together, not just black, white, Hispanic, Native American, uh, Amish, everybody's coming together to make a statement about uh, humanity, if you will. Yeah. Let me, let me tell you, 2020 has been the year of unprecedented moments, hasn't it? <laughs> like, man, unprecedented, like lockdowns, you know, stay at home orders, churches not being in church buildings. And now you have an entire world coming together to say, we want to see real change. Like, that's just, it's, it's been chaotic, but at the same time, there's been this beauty in the middle of the chaos, you know? Sorry. And, and you know, we've had a protest before. Uh, I remember uh, in Baltimore when they, the one gentleman was killed and um, by the police officers, and and you know there was riots. There was a big uh, up, uprising in Baltimore and different places. But this one feels a little different. It has a different uh, feel about it. it um, the, you can actually see the protesters having. Uh, a focus on what they're doing. And there's always gonna be good and evil in every every group, you know. I don't care what side you're on. And it was so um, re- rewarding yesterday to be at the protest. And even there, they had a couple of people trying to just derail the message that the protesters were doing. And right there, they, they, they corrected it. Yep. And so, I can't but imagine, you know, if it's happening here, it's happening everywhere. And so it's, it's, it's going to happen. So this, this one, this protest, this movement uh, right now, this push has a different feeling. So we're just believing something, uh, some communication is, is going to come forward out of this. Yeah. And man, I was super encouraged by the Capitol Police Chief yesterday and the just the direction that he gave us his heart for change. Uh, you know, his his own standards and his the police and his police department and what he requires his his um officers to go through. But I the respect that he got from the protesters was impressive. Mm-hmm. I mean, they treated him with so much peace and dignity and they weren't yelling at him. You know, hey, if some of them were emotional, that's okay. You know, sure. people are hurting. 
but no one was attacking the police yesterday. It was, it, it was a beautiful sight. Yeah. Can I, can I add to that too? Yeah. Uh, the police chief was respectful for, to them. Mm -hmm. So it was just reciprocated. Mm -hmm. And so there was a dialogue that was taking place and that's what's needed. Because some of the questions they had for him, they, some of them were the same. So you could really see that some of the things that were on their heart kept getting repeated, you know, about the training. You know, what kind of training are you guys getting? And, you know, how often are you getting it? They kept repeating that because that's, that's what they feel. And the chief, though, he was very res res respectful. Um, and you could see that coming back. And you could see it de-escalating uh, de everything because um, – if you had someone there who was just um, not being courteous, not being um, um, respectful, you could see that 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 conversation going totally, totally different. Yeah, for sure. You could see how it could escalate quickly. Yeah. Reverend, did you have something to say, man, when we were talking? Well, well one of the things, uh, as believers, you look to the scripture, uh, and I think Jesus showed us this example, that God's heart is so big, he will leave the 99 mm -hmm. and go back for mm -hmm. And so uh, just to have the heart of God, to, to, to look and to see uh, where are people hurting? Well, one thing I appreciate about you, Pastor Ryan, and of course your dad, Pastor Coon, and the ministry at Calvary is community to seek in the state that which is lost. And so many people are lost. For example, uh, I think the statement is, or the saying is, uh, you want to be, you don't want to be so heaven, so, uh, well, how's, how's it go? Oh, so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Mm -hmm. But I say, you don't want to be so earthly bound that you're no heavenly good. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, I think our heart is, Lord, what is it you want me to do to extend the kingdom of God? And the work, the work of the ministry is, is easy to love those who love you, yeah. but to genuinely love those who oppose you and to use the wisdom of God. I think scripture says in Proverbs, in all you're getting, get understanding. Mm -hmm. Number one, to understand what people are going to and then say, how can I be a a positive for change yeah let's let's talk about that like you you carried it you you started us up and segued into my next question what is our biblical response you know and that goes for all of us but if you guys want to get specific you can you can recommend you know to the black community the white community or the entire family of god you know what is our biblical response because i think i think that's the best way of doing it is to the entire family of god since we're all in one body when we're united with christ so, you know, Brandon and I got to preach about that today. Brandon, if you want to start, you know. Yeah, I can jump in on this one. Um, Reverend definitely had that good answer of Jesus would leave the 99 to get the one. And uh, what I, the scripture I found was kind of is Isaiah 117, which says to do right, seek justice and defend the oppressed, to be a voiceless voice for the voiceless and um i think that gives clear instruction for believers that when you see oppression we should be doing something about it it we should be it says defend the oppressed to defend something means you got to do something there has to be some action that takes place and uh, i don't want to completely redo the message when we you know, read, uh, I don't want to read the Good Samaritan, but we know from that story that the Samaritan, he goes out of his way and does a whole lot to take care of the injured Jewish man. So when we see something that's wrong, when we see the police brutality and the injustice in our country, not just, not just from the police aspect, but that's what's kind of front and center right now, but all over, our country, we should be as the church, as a Christ body, doing something to spread love, doing something to to make it 
make that oppression correct to make it so that's not happening anymore we yeah. should be defending those that are oppressed and right now the one sheep that is facing danger and the and the people that need that are being oppressed is the black community so the church should be doing all it it can the people of god should be doing all they can to create change so that the way our country and the way people treat each other reflects Christ because we don't see God's love portrayed in our world right now. And I think it's the church's job to be an example. The way that we treat people, the way that we defend people is a way, is a reflection of God's love. And when the world sees that and mirrors that and emulates that and they they think what's different, it's just that's the gospel in action. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Well one of the conversations we're all familiar with is in Matthew 25 when Jesus judges the nations. And some of the conversation went, Well, when when do we see you hungry? Or when do we see you naked or or, or in prison. And Jesus said, as much as you have done it unto the least of these, my brother, mm -hmm. you've done it unto me. And so, again, Pastor Ryan, as, as you mentioned, as a church, part of the mindset that I've seen in my time in ministry is, I hate to use the word, the average believer, but the young believer, if you will, or even the older young believer, might have in the mindset, my church, my denomination. Well, there's one church. There's one church globally or universally. And so if we can think uh, there's one church on the one head whose name is Jesus and take our orders through relationship with him, then I, I believe that uh, the world would take change. Even as when, when, when uh, Moses uh, died and Joshua took over, God gave instructions to wipe out everything in these nations. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it. And so now we're into a time where uh, believers are, are living like the world. And I'm saying in, in generalities. And so I thank God the heart of Calvary is to build up and disciple and to stand out to evangelize. And so as much as we can to live the life of a believer, to know Jesus and to make him known. Yeah. And Ryan, um, I think also just not to, to hate because when a climate is like this, uh, people have a tendency, sometimes they have a tendency to, to get so emotional that, uh, uh, that they can become hateful about things. And, you know, and, and John, I think first John talks about, you know, how can you love God and, and hate your brother? Or, and, and the way we, we actually overcome that is by, by doing good. And so we are to guard our hearts and the passions that we have and, and, and the things that we do. Um, because if we're growing in our relationship with, with God, our hearts are going to be tender to what's going around us. Yeah, and sure. we have we have to we have to temper our passions with the word of god and and just to make sure we're lining up lining up with god's heart for for our community yeah. and i remember how what jesus talked about when he looked around and he saw the people that they were hurting his heart was 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 broken he said they were like sheep without a shepherd so when we look around and, and we see uh our community hurting that should really uh, stir our hearts. So what do we do with that? What do we do with that, that heart that is uh, touched by what we see that's going on? You know, do we pray? Do we intercede? Um, do we um, try to make a difference in some way? Do we listen to somebody? Do we listen, give them an opportunity to, to share their experience and, 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 and um, show some empathy to, to what, what, what's going on in their life? So I, I think we have to guard our hearts yeah, you know, one thing I'm seeing is 
love is casting out fear. You know, I'm, I'm seeing there's fear, you know, there's fear between different races. There's fear because there's this, these concepts or these ideas of fear towards people, whether it's towards police, towards the black community, and sometimes just not understanding each other makes us be afraid. But what I'm seeing is I'm watching really positive stories online too taking place where that fear is going away because conversations are happening. You're seeing, you're seeing the black community come around the, the police and giving them hugs and the police apologizing. I saw a post where a woman had written a letter to her black neighbor saying, I'm sorry that I haven't, you know, been there for you. And, and it just changed her heart. And it's really cool what's happening, you know, in the midst of this bad stuff, like in the midst of the rioting, you know, and all the other narratives that are going on. I don't want to lose sight of the good that's going on. You know, I think that, and I'm going to be honest with you, I think some cops are also appreciating what's going on because finally, you know, there's, there's a conversation about police reform going on more seriously, as well as they're able to have conversations with their neighbors, their community and go, I really, I really don't hate you. You know, I love you. And, and I, by the way, I have two police officers in my family, in my family line, um, my, my, on my sister, on my wife's side. And then my, uh, my sister's husband is an agent for the air force. And so, you know, I, I pray for them. I think about them as well. But even they were like, that was, even that when they saw the video of George Floyd, they're like, wow, that was terrible handling of the situation. They said that would have never, they would have never, ever done that. Um, and they actually gave me some insight too, that that's not the training they get, you know, and that there's a lack of training, it looks like in Minneapolis. But even that helped me understand too, like how layered this is. <laughs> you know that that police need better training you know and reform you know so but it, yeah anyway i just wanted to say like yeah that love is so important and i think what's happening is some of the hate is dying as we come together and it's kind of weird because it's in confrontational moments where they're getting a chance to love each other isn't that wild it's just like wow yeah. so yeah two two words popped into my mind when you're speaking, Pastor Ryan. One is conversation and one is fear that you mentioned. Mm. But part of the challenge uh, in, in my growing up and the people that I've talked with over the years is we have to move past conversation mm. because what we can't do is to say, okay, now we get it. We had the conversation and move on because Right. If, if concrete things are not done at the local level to make change in your local level, your state, in your federal, it'll just be another situation mm. that'll come up and things will get worse. Uh, the, other, the other side is the flip side of fear. Again, in my experiences in coming up, it seems like uh, there's a, a economic and political power structure, that fear is what more to black people do you want? What more do you want me to give you? And so it's almost like uh, you should be satisfied with what you have now. And as a church, that's not how God sees things. Uh, yeah. For example, you remember the, uh, the Syrophoenician woman, when Jesus said, she asked him to come heal her daughter, and he says, not me for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. And she said, even the dogs <laughs> eat the crumbs. Yeah. And so there's a time where we have different responsibility, but we're all equal. And for the church to, even in individual ministries, that every member or partner, if you will, ought to feel like no matter what my color or education background is, I'm important, I'm equal, and then press on from there. And if the world can see that the church is like that, I think we'll bring in our harvest of souls. Yeah, that's good. Well, I got one more question for you guys and we'll wrap it up. Um, how important is the gospel in this situation? I'd like to hear from all three of you. Like how needed is the gospel um, 
right now in our world for dealing with racism and then at the same time reconciliation um i think the gospel is the ultimate and the biggest answer it's the only thing that can truly transform a life and give somebody a new heart and while we are taught in scripture as i quoted isaiah 117 earlier for, that we should take action and try and defeat oppression in our world. Um, ultimately, sin is always going to, unfortunately, sin is always going to be here, be there in some form or aspect um, until Jesus sets up New Jerusalem here on earth. Until then, you know, sin's always going to be alive. And if you have somebody that is really part of the problem and racist, all these protests and banners and things like that, I don't think is really going to change somebody's mind like that. It's just going to incite hate, more hate and anger within that person. And the only thing that can actually transform their heart would be the Holy Spirit coming in them because they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so the gospel is the biggest answer and to me, the only real answer to transforming lives of individuals and to see that if a gospel were to penetrate an entire family community, city, that would create change within that whole city, how they operate everything, how an individual does everything. You know, if, if that officer had the gospel in his heart, I guarantee you that situation wouldn't have happened. So, you know, you know what I mean? So I think the gospel is the biggest answer. And while we can't force the gospel upon everybody, there's still earthly things like Reverend Field was saying, there's still earthly things we can do to create change. But heavenly, the gospel is the biggest answer. Yeah. And I, I think um, uh, right along with that, you know, with the gospel is the living of the gospel because we can say some things, but if our lifestyle don't match up with what we're saying, it's no good. It's, it's like murky, murky waters. So the carrying out of the, of the, the gospel, you know, living it out, you know, um, doing good before all people that, that God can be glorified, that's it, really. That's, you know, giving somebody a, a, a cup of water when they're hot, um, you know, empathizing with people, just being an ear is, is a carrying out of that gospel. Because if we just say it, our works are dead. And it doesn't doesn't mean a thing. Mm. Yeah, you know, hearing your question, Pastor Ryan, brings three things to my mind. The gospel we've all heard. The gospel is God's only Son provides eternal life. Two scriptures: one in Romans one sixteen, the Apostle Paul said, "For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God." unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with... Uh, refers up there a little bit. Okay, there you go. You're back now. Okay. You had frozen up on, the, on Acts 10. Acts 10, 38. Yeah. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good to all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, so the gospel is the, the power of Christ, Jesus, believing in Christ, to change, well, really, to come and dwell in you, really, through the Holy Spirit. 
and for you to confess your sins, to repent of your sins, and to do life with Jesus rather than without Jesus. And, and with Jesus is going to be the characteristics of Jesus. And, and Jesus broke down every barrier of, of race, uh, even the gender barrier, you know, of treating women with respect and dignity, and they can be in leadership. You see Jesus just transform culture. And so the way he transformed culture is he transformed hearts. It was, right. it was change hearts that changed culture. And man, can we use some culture change right now in our world? And, uh, and I, I think I, I hear Brandon too, like, you know, yeah, outside change is going to happen, but ultimately we need that inside change, that inner man change, mm -hmm. because we can throw laws on people all day, but the law doesn't save anyone. Only Jesus Christ can. And the law is not going to change a racist mind's heart. It may tell him he's wrong, but it won't fix him inside so that he'll do what's right. And that, that's what, where we as the church need to come in. Because what good is it to throw a person who's a criminal into prison and, and they, they know they're wrong because they go to prison, but they never truly change, you know? We want to see where they can be completely changed from the inside out. And, you know, I think for us as a church, a challenge that we need to have, you know, I'm a pastor. I get to make, I get to give a challenge right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, we need, we need the church to step up here, you know, and to focus on the mission of spreading the good news of Jesus, the truth that sin is real but Jesus came to deal with it, to turn away from your sin and to follow the ways of Christ because he's going to come into you and he's going to help you do that. And we need the church to rise up and start to share that message, live it out. You know, don't be contradicting, don't be hypocritical and live this message out. So yeah, well, praise God. Hey, this is a great conversation. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to share your heart and, um, we're praying all who are watching this today and in the coming weeks, you know, that you will be encouraged by this and challenged by this to, to make a difference. And, you know, really our response is, is to love people no matter what and to listen. I think one of the best ways we can love someone is listen, understand and validate what they've been going through. And that goes for, for all of us doing that with one another. And, um, and then uh, we need to share the gospel. We need to share the gospel with our friends so they can have true change, everlasting change, you know? And uh, so, well, thank you guys. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank would you. one of you mind praying for us on the way out? Sure, I'll pray. Go ahead. Well, Lord, we thank you for this time uh, to get together and, and just talk about what's going on in our community, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Ryan uh, uh, just bringing this 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 group together to have this conversation, Lord, because it's needed and it's happening everywhere, Lord. And Lord, it's our desire to, to have a biblical worldview on what's going on now, Lord, and not our own personal, Lord, not our own personal choices and, and decisions, Lord, but all those things need to be evaluated according to your word, Lord, because only your word can transform life. Only your word can transform our community, Lord. So we just pray for our community that's that's hurting. We pray for our, our black community that's hurting right now, Lord. We pray, Father, that uh, uh, their voices will be heard, Lord. Their experiences, Father, will be heard. And we just pray, Father, that uh, uh, you would give wisdom to our leadership within our in our cities, Lord, and uh, in our states, and, and in our and within our nation, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would give them wisdom in how to um, uh, receive the messages that are, are being sent forth and, and how to implement those, uh, those messages into change. So we pray, Father, also for our, 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 our Black community, Lord, as, as we're voicing our, our hurts, Lord, we pray, Father, that those would be done in the right way, a, a positive way. And, 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 and a way that's modeled to our, 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 our younger generation as well. We thank you that the earth is yours, Lord, in all of its fullness, Lord. Father, you are in control even now. 
So we entrust you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. God bless you. God bless you.